So we've been working out of this packet, the cutting speeds and feeds, we, we finished that up. Last week we talked about the spur gears and their applications and formulas and all that stuff. Well today, because things are switching over to the metric system and manufacturing right now because of the huge amount of parts being produced overseas, it's switching over to the metric system as well. Um, in fact, mo many of your large international companies have announced, like IBM has announced, that even domestic production is going to be done in metric. None of their stuff is going to be done in the standard system anymore because of the huge amount of savings. I mean, look at you doing your design work, just the extra time it takes to have to dual label everything in standard units, convert it to metric, but also the, the whole uh, having to convert all of your raw materials. You're, you're purchasing your raw materials in standard units, but you're sending it to a metric or you're having it shipped to a metric uh, subsidiary somewhere in a foreign country. You have to make all those conversions and the round off errors even. It, it adds up to tens of millions of dollars. IBM actually estimated close to $200 million they were going to save in the first year. Not to mention the fact that in the conversions with the round off errors, sometimes parts don't fit exactly and things like that. So, a long explanation to justify a simple concept. We're, we've been talking about pitch of gears and how the pitch of a gear describes the spacing of the teeth. And the spacing of the teeth has to be exactly the same between two gears for them to mesh. For two gears to, to mesh together without any problems, they must have exactly the same pitch. So if one gear has a pitch of 12 and the next gear has a pitch of 12.1, they may look like they'll mesh together, but eventually there will be some sort of issue. There will be binding, there will be chipping of teeth. Something's going to go wrong and cause problems with those gears. Well, in the metrics, and of course the pitch was the number of teeth divided by the diameter of the gear. Now, the diameter is what we call the diametric or pitch diameter of that gear. Um, it's, we talked a little bit about it. I'm just going to roughly sketch this out. Okay, that's ugly. Pretend those look like teeth on a gear. Remember, you have that inner diameter, which is just this inner circle we put in here, the inside of the teeth. We have an outer diameter, which is out here, the outside of the teeth. Somewhere in between there is a pitch diameter. That pitch diameter, or sometimes called the working diameter of the gear, is that gear's unique space. Um, it's going to mesh with another gear somewhere out here. The inner diameter of this gear must be outside of the outer diameter of that gear. The inner diameter of one gear will never cross over the outer diameter of another. Um, and then of course you got the teeth on that gear meshing in. But anyway, if those two gears mesh together, the pitch diameter of one gear, here, let's draw in the outer diameter of this one. I'll get a different color. Here's an outer diameter for this one. Notice the outer diameters have to mesh because otherwise the teeth won't be touching. But the outer diameter of one and the inner diameter of the other will always be disjoint. They'll never touch each other. And the pitch diameter of one and the pitch diameter of the other will exactly touch each other. They'll be tangent. That's why it's called the working diameter because that's that gear's unique space. When they mesh together, those pitch circles touch each other. They just touch each other. They don't penetrate inside. They just barely touch each other. They're tangent. So anyway, that's why in the standard system we use pitch to describe those things. In the metric system, we use the metric module system. Now our metric module is the diameter divided by the number of teeth. This has always upset me because look at what we just set up here. Pitch is number of teeth divided by diameter. Module is just backwards. In the standard pitch system, the pitch is describing the number of teeth per inch. So per inch of diameter is this many teeth. The module, what it's describing is millimeters per tooth or meters per tooth, depending on what units you're using for your module system. So it's this is describing how many teeth there are per inch. This is describing literally the distance between teeth, the spacing of the teeth. Now it's not circumference, it's, it's just diameter, so it's not quite an exact spacing, but you get the point. So in the mod metric system, if I have a gear that has a diameter of, oh, let's go 80 
8 millimeters and has 11 teeth. The module of that gear, 88 millimeters over 11 teeth, that is 8 millimeters per tooth. But it has a module of 8. Now we went over all this other junk um, that we talked about in the in the, the the whole pitch and stuff for the spur gears. Um, there is the circular pitch. Um, if you recall, in the standard pitch system, the standard units, the circular pitch was just pi times the diameter divided by the number of teeth, looking at the pitch circle. And it's very similar in the metric module system. It is, what they do, however, is they use a constant, instead. it's 1 over pi instead of um, whatever. The circular pitch would actually be, let me double check this. And I don't know why they list it this way. Um, I was always taught circular pitch is pi times m, pi times the module. Because pi, the module number is your diameter over n. Well, pi times diameter is the circumference of that pitch circle. So pi times the module is just converting that to the circumference instead of the diameter. For some reason, and to me, this is the simpler version of that formula, formula pi times module. For some reason, this book is this packet I've given you is using module divided by um, 0.3183. Well, 0.3183 is just one divided by or, yeah one divided by pi. I have no idea why that's considered simpler. To me, this is simpler. Pi times module. Anyway, so morning. Other things that we talked about, we had the pitch diameter. Of course, it's going to just be working some of these formulas backwards. So pitch diameter, you're just looking at D. Now remember, the module was the diameter divided by the number of teeth. So if you're going to solve that formula, just multiply by n. If module is equal to D over n, you multiply by n, D is equal to m times n. Simple formulas. I'm not going to go through all of them, but we do have just like um, in the, the standard gears, Remember in that table, the last several items in that table on page uh, 248, actually the table starts on 247, but the what part I'm talking about is on page 248. You had several of those formulas and asterisks on them. And remember those asterisks were saying that these formulas only apply to a specific type of spur gear. Those are your 14 and a half inch beveled tooth gear, or 14 and a half degree beveled tooth gear, I should say. Um, so those only applied for a certain type of gear. Same thing in our table for the module, metric module. About the last half of that table, several of those are marked with an asterisk. Um, this is actually, in, in the module system, it's a standard bevel on all the teeth, but they're just talking when there's a certain amount of clearance. Um, when you have the, the 0 0.157 module clearance on it. It's just a special type of gear is all that saying, which is, it's a very, very common type of gear. I bet 90, 95% of all your gears are a 0 0.157, 157,000 clearance module gear. So we'll just go with those formulas for now. All right, so I promised you I would do some examples. So we are going to take a look at some of the more complicated problems. You guys are doing the odds, so I'm going to pick number 40 here for a sec. Number 40 on page 253. So what number 40 gives us, it gives us the number of teeth are 29 teeth. And we have a pitch diameter of 2.0714 inches. It's asking us to find the root diameter. Root diameter and inner diameter are the same thing. I was always taught inner diameter, so I tend to use that vocabulary. But this packet uses root diameter for that. So we're back to that table, 247, 248. And we're looking for the root diameter, so it makes sense. We would start looking up the root diameter. Um, we look up the root diameter there on 248, and we have one formula for the root diameter. Our only formula for the root diameter is, it is D, which is the pitch diameter, which we're given right there, minus 2 times little d. What's little d? 
Rule of D is the dedendum. Remember, the dedendum was the, if this is your pitch diameter, this is your inner diameter, this is your outer diameter, um, the dedendum was the distance from that pitch diameter to your inner, to your root diameter, inside. That's your dedendum. That's little d. So it makes sense. Pitch diameter minus 2 of that because you have it on this side, and you'd have it over on this side as well that you'd subtract it off. So we need to find little d, but we don't know little d. So we go down there to the formula for dedendum, which is a couple of lines down, and we see that the dedendum is 1.157 divided by PC. We don't, PC, remember, is the circular pitch. We don't know that yet. Or little d is 0.3683 times PC. Again, we have to have the circular pitch. We don't know that. So, to find the dedendum, we have to have the dedendum because it's our only possible way to get at that root diameter. We've got to find, apparently, the circular pitch. So let's go back now to circular pitch and see what the formulas are for that. Circular pitch. And here we have it, right and bright for us. PC is 3.1416. 3.1416, of course, is exactly the four-digit version of pi instead of the two-digit version. Times the pitch diameter divided by the number of teeth. We have that information up here. That was what we were given was the number of teeth and the pitch diameter. So we're going to put in here 3.1416 times our pitch diameter was 2. Point, perfect. And our number of teeth? 29. So 3.1416 times 2.0. 714 divided by 29 gives us 0.2244, I would call that. That is little d, or no, not little d, that's PC, or circular pitch, sorry. Now that we know our circular pitch, we can put that back up in here to find little d. So little d is going to be 0 0.3683 times that circular pitch of 0.2244. So that times 0 0.0823. Now that we have that, now we can come back up here. Our root diameter is... Pitch diameter of 2.017, oops, sorry, 714, 2.0714, minus 2 times 0 0.0826. And we'll calculate that out. 2.0714 minus 2 times, I'm just going to pull the an previous answer, and there we go. 1.906, which is, there's our, yeah, because you got to remember, here is the inner pitch and outer, and yeah, you've got to take it off of here and off of here. Yes, sir? Uh, when it comes to doing the equation for the pitch, so yep. 3.1416. Uh, if you use the pi button, that would be fine. Okay, but I didn't know if you could yeah. just do it with 3.14 or if you had to have the extended version. Of if you use 3.14, 3 that's fine too. I mean,. It all depends on what you're doing. The reason that these formulas go down to the fourth decimal place is because you guys are working, a lot of your applications are going down to at least the thousandth of an inch. So you don't want to be rounding off to a hundredth. In fact, in many cases, you want to go one digit past what your degree of manufacturing precision is. That's why they go to the ten thousandth, so you can manufacture to the one thousandth. <coughs> a general rule in engineering is you always design, it's called an order of magnitude. All it is is a decimal place. You always design one order of magnitude beyond what you're going to produce. So if you wanna if you wanna produce on the production floor to the nearest thousandth of an inch, your tooling, your your molds, your jigs, and everything on the floor, they must be produced to a ten thousandth of an inch, one order of magnitude or one decimal place beyond that. Which means they must be designed to a hundred thousandth of an inch. Um, I've worked with a couple of companies in this area. Um, well. Uh, Hutchinson down in Eau Claire and Chippewa. 
I worked with them briefly, oh, geez, like 13 years ago now. Um, they have some stuff that they manufactured for a millionth of an inch. Because, but it's not their manufacturer, I shouldn't say, they don't manufacture the millionth of an inch, they create it for the millionth of an inch. Because that's in their tooling department. So their tooling is done to a millionth of an inch because they're looking to manufacture to a ten thousandth of an inch for some of their parts. In fact, you guys are uh, familiar with an EDM or ESM, electrostatic discharge machine? What it is, series of pulleys and a wire. And of course, there's a spool here. That wire goes through a spool and back, it feeds back through. Um, it's a wire. It looks almost like a large bandsaw, but all it is is a very, very taut, tight wire with a huge electrical current being fed through it. Um, I think I said it's not a continuous wire. Technically, I should do it like this. It goes around the spool up through, and it goes around another spool down here to wind it back up. Um, these pulleys here have electrodes hooked to them, so there's electricity flowing through that wire. Very high current, and what happens is you're feeding your, your metallic stock into it, and it's the electricity in that wire. It's actually sending off a spark that cuts through the, the metal. It makes a very, very clean and smooth cut. They were manufacturing to such tight tolerances that we actually had to figure out for them. If you're looking at it from the front side, here's your wire. I'm going to actually draw it like this. Here's your wire. But if they were cutting anything more than a quarter inch thick, that the wire itself, as it was feeding through, would wear down. So it would actually be slightly thinner as it was feeding through. So we actually had to figure out for them, if you're cutting something more than a certain thickness, it was, it was actually slightly under a quarter inch, that became a significant reduction in the wire diameter. So in order to get a perfectly straight square cut, you actually had to slightly tilt the stock as you put it in. Now we're talking about less than a hundredth of a degree you had to tilt it. But their manufacturing was that precise that they had to tilt it to keep it that close to, to square. Yeah. Okay, well, I have rambled on enough for you guys. In your packet, you guys should be done up through number 53 right now. So we're going to start on page 254, picking up with number 55, 55 through 63, the odds on metric module. So what that means is when you come in tomorrow, you should have this packet done 1 through 63 the odds there will be a unit test tomorrow in class i told you this is going to be a short unit a little one weeker so tomorrow we wrap her up and then we get on to starting the geometry we need for trig